Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Hi, it's product review time again. Yep, it's another multimeter. And we haven't had one of these for a while. It's a German Gossen Metrowatt, made in Germany. You beauty. What have these wacky Germans been up to this time with the MetroHit Energy? It's part of their uh, Starline series, very similar to the MetroHit Extra uh, system multimeter I've reviewed donkeys years ago. And this is the new Energy Multimeter, triple display, measures power and energy consumption. It's brilliant. It's one of my favorite meters on my bench. Let's crack it open and see what's inside. Here it is up close. It uses exactly the same case as the MetroHit uh, Extra series, which I've reviewed before. But of course, it now it measures uh, energy, power, watts, VA, um, power factor, and all sorts of stuff, voltage and current at the same time. And that's why you've got the triple digit display up here, which is beautiful. I love it. It's got full count and resolution on each display. Ha <laughs> ha. Beautiful, and it's exactly the same case. It's got the IR interface and uh, the same tilting bale and everything else. There it is, made in Germany. Gotta love it. Love German-made gear. Uh, it's got a separate battery compartment up here, separate fuse compartment, and a couple of um, uh, security screws down the bottom, which we'll crack open and see if we can get inside the case. And there you have it, you open it up and you immediately uh, like the construction except for one glaring thing which you are immediately drawn to and that is a mod resistor on the back of this board here. Look at it. Um, granted, I do, I believe I have like an early uh, unit because I've had this one for quite some time so um, I would presume that they've uh, sorted that out and they've upgraded that in their production boards. I may even have a pre-production board or something like that there. Um, but as you can see, it's uh, two board uh, construction with the input circuitry, which looks quite nice. Let's take a more detailed look. Now, what looks like at first to be a two board uh, construction here, it's not, it's actually a three board construction. There's a third board under there, presumably a display board uh, going through that connector there. And as you would expect, there is complete uh, O-ring protection right around the outside of the case. But uh, the main uh, top part of the case, though, does not have really deep uh, ridges on it uh, for, you know, maximum blast protection. But uh, Gossen do know what they're doing in this area. They are one of the leaders in um, uh, multimeter input protection and stuff like that. So I'm sure they know exactly what they're doing. And they've done the right thing with this uh, fuse compartment design here. There's an extended uh, part here which mates up with the um, isolation slot, high voltage isolation slot on the board here. So it's for blast protection as well as arc over uh, protection as well between the um, input uh, side and ground. That's a really nice design. I like it. There's one thing Gossen's uh, done which is interesting. On the uh, DC input jack here, it's highly recessed on the back of the case and presumably that's to stop the connector when you put the connector in there it's to stop it um, shearing off uh, to actually give it some uh, stress protection so that's a really nice uh, really nice um, aspect of the design and you can see the extended tube here for it but unfortunately it does go out to just basic flying leads which are just uh, hand soldered onto the board there I would have much preferred to see a high quality connector there and the input jacks here I really like. They're quite a unique design. They've got a single uh, solid piece coming out of here with a, a single uh, integrated lead coming out. And then it's fed into a slot on the board like that and then hand soldered down there. There's a bit of solder residue on there, but it's not a big deal. Um, so that ensures a rigid connection because it's um, actually gone through that slot and held in place with that slot. So it's really quite nice. And there's automatic um, isolation between... Uh, the front side and the back side of the board here. And it's just, it's really quite nice. 
As you'd expect with a top quality Gossen meter, you get a ton of input protection. Here's some high power input protection resistors, uh, a couple of PTC poly switches here and here. That's your AC input uh, coupling cap. You've got a couple of gas discharge tubes here, surface mount versions, nice to see. You've got a MOV here. And curiously, there's a couple of uh, what looks like half amp fuses here and I'm not sure what they're actually uh, protecting. Your guess is as good as mine. I've removed the main fuse here and you can see the current uh, sense resistor under there and they've actually used a proper surface mount full terminal current sense resistor instead of the uh, bent piece of metal basically that uh, almost every other meter uses and you can see the um, extra you can see the voltage sense terminals there tapping directly off that directly off the terminals or the pads of that resistor and that's the proper way to do it it's really nice now curiously there's a couple of uh, MOSFET big power MOSFETs here like this which uh, switch the fuse now I did a quick check and I've actually got a uh, Dave CAD drawing of that here let's so let's take a look at it here's your uh, amps jack over here and your ground uh, jack here there's your 10 milliohm four terminal current sense resistor there the uh, those that voltage goes off there to a, uh, to a differential amplifier. And these are your two MOSFETs. They're an IRL um, 2203 and a pretty uh, standard device. It's a nice device. It's got a 7 milliamp on resistance, very low, uh, 30 volt rated, 116 amp, big, beefy power MOSFET. And they're put back to back like that. And of course, there's internal uh, parasitic uh, diodes with that as well. Now, this secondary board here that's uh, rather interesting you don't see that very often these days and i like it it's just uses uh a standard 0.1 inch pin headers like that it really is quite nice the circuitry under there we'll take a look at but uh this is actually the uh power monitoring uh board which enables all the um all the uh power factor correction and energy monitoring devices this device here is actually a uh it's hard to get the number on that but it's actually a uh, cirrus logic uh, cs5463 and that's a bi-directional power energy monitor ic specifically designed for uh this application so they've used it as you would you would use an off-the-shelf chip for this they've already perfected the uh, energy measurement technology and and the various techniques used to measure all that sort of stuff so it's all on chip it's got a built-in voltage reference this is just support circuitry i'm not sure what it does bunch of op amps a few transistors and things pretty much uh discrete stuff but i uh rather like that board the bodgy resistor i don't know i'm going to assume they fixed it in the production version i'm not going to mark them down for that because well i don't know it's gossen and well they actually have um a, a history of doing this, Germany com German companies like to make mods like this. It's not unusual at all, but I'm sure they've fixed it. And check it out. This brings tears of joy. We've got two uh, high sensitivity 3 volt relays on here. Real manly relays that you switch stuff with. None of this electronic switching. Stick in a relay. I love it when you turn the rain switch and you hear that click of that relay. You know, oh, you just know. It's designed and it's going to measure properly. I love it. And if you're wondering what this device here, it looks rather curious. I have uh, I don't think I've ever seen one of these before, or very rarely. But uh, what I believe it is, is I believe it's a um, thick film hybrid precision resistor. And I measure it and it's pretty darn close to spot on to 20 mega ohms. So um, I believe that's what it is. And... Uh, it's just unusual because one thing you won't find on this board overall is a thick film precision hybrid resistor network. So uh, obviously, they're, um, well, they're, that's probably one of them and maybe they're using some dis discrete. I don't know. But as you can see, the rest of the board is lovely constructed. The uh, uh, lovely, uh, nicely laid out, the uh, soldering, the construction, the components are uh, first class we've got a, a couple of um surface mount electrolytic caps here there's a couple of tantalums in there as well there's lots of uh 40 series uh switching like there's some max uh 4053 devices uh down here there's a max 4052 over here somewhere and this device down in here is actually the uh, true rms converter chip and they haven't used the analog devices one they've gone 
with a uh, Cirrus Tech um, brand, which is a, uh, I believe it's a Taiwanese uh, brand who do multimeter chipsets. They also do a uh, true RMS converter chip, and it's the ES636, which presumably is uh, maybe uh, pin compatible. I haven't checked. Probably pin compatible with the analog devices parts because as you can see they put in a dual footprint there So maybe they can uh, decide at, at the time of production whether or not to use the uh, Cirrus Tech one or maybe use a different package or a different brand entirely No major surprises whatsoever. The main processor is a TI MSP 430 low power 16 bit uh, micro and uh, there's another device here which might be a custom one. I don't know. It's got a sticker over it. I'm going to have to take that off. Uh, there's a bunch of other uh, discrete, um, just uh, discrete devices around here. There's nothing uh, terribly interesting there. And the battery terminals are lovely. The AA battery terminals soldered directly onto the board. I love it. There are three, uh, three terminal mount like that. Really nice. And they've got a proper uh, through hole. Buzzer like that. None of this external little uh, piezo crap which is stick on the side of the case with a couple of flying leads. And there's the infrared transceiver. Now curiously it's actually a fair distance back from the uh, window on the back part of the device here but I guess that's not a big deal. It still works just fine. I've taken the sticker off that chip and I can't see any identifiable markings at all. There's a bit of residue on there which I can't get off but I can't see a thing. So maybe it's a fully custom Gossam ASIC. Who knows? Gossam? You got an answer on that one? Well, I'm trying to get this top board out here and one of the really annoying things is that it looks like you have to desolder the input connectors here before you can actually lift the board out. What a bummer! There we go, I've desoldered the uh, three terminals there, which was actually uh, quite easy, and ta-da! There we go, it lifts straight up, and we can access the bottom board. And here's the famous Gossen range switch, that's how they implement it. They've got springs either side here with large notches, and this is how they make it feel and sound so magnificent when it switches ranges like that, and the positive retention you get on each one. Oh, it's just pornographic. It really is. And here's the bottom part of the board. They've got extra, some extra power resistors on here. They've got this large uh, metal shielding can. There's not much under there. There's just pretty much uh, more of the same. They've got uh, a whole bunch of other uh, passive devices on the bottom here and not much else really. But um, yeah, there's quite a significant amount of extra passives on the bottom side. There you go, there's more hybrid resistors on the bottom here. A couple more there, a couple of meg each. And there's another device down here which looks similar. It's uh, green, uh, coated with like a green uh, mask on it, which looks different to those. But it's a, the, the, uh, the tracking work on the top is identical, but that one is not high value. That one's around about 0.2 ohms or thereabouts. I've swung away the top uh, LCD board and... Once again, they're spared no expense here. Instead of just um, the rubber membrane type uh, interface, they've got proper tactile surface mount switches there. Beautiful. And the LCD just isn't a standard uh, LCD, a cheap LCD uh, with just the uh, zebra strip for the contacts. It's actually a chip on board. Those, those two little uh, things you see down in there are actually the uh, chip on glass. They're actually the chip chips mounted directly on the glass and as you can see there's not many connection interfaces there's just a, a few down here and a couple of extra uh, support ones uh, top and bottom here and that's actually got the circuitry built on to drive all of the many many hundreds of circuits for the triple digit display on there because really uh, without that you wouldn't you have a hell of a time driving it from just a generic micro it's just got too many segments with that triple display so They've gone to a lot of effort there to do a fully custom uh, chip on glass or a COG display, it's called. And I've put it back together and it all works, of course, but listen to these lovely relays. Oh, isn't that just beautiful? Let's hear that again. 
Ah. Oh. After tearing something down, there's usually a screw left over, but not in this case. I'm missing the fuse. For the life of me, I have no idea where the thing went. Unbelievable. One thing which uh, is hard to get a, a real gauge of is the quality of the plastics used in the construction, but you can just, uh, after a while, you get some experience, you can just tell that this is a real high quality ABS, probably an impact resistant uh, polymer type uh, ABS material, real high quality uh, stuff, as you'd expect in a high-end meter like a Goss, and I'm sure they're spared no expense. It's not those cheap, brittle plastics you get in the real One Hung Low brand meters. So there you have it, that's the Gossen Metriot Energy Multimeter, as you'd expect, superbly designed and built. I'm thoroughly impressed. That dodgy resistor aside, well, you know, I'm sure they'll fix that, but there's no excuse for that. But anyway, unbelievably good. I love the quality, the design, and the construction, but you pay through the nose for it, so that's what you expect. Now, where's that freaking fuse? Man!